Welcome to the Louis File. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about something that is, uh, is of major importance to anybody that is uh, wanting to be a biblical uh, Christian, someone that is wanting to follow what the Bible says. You know, there's uh, always... The, old, the Bible's broken down into two things, two sections. The Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, or the New Testament. You know, lots of people struggle with the idea about the law and whether we're under the law. And if we are under any of it, are we under part of it? You know, I've heard people break it down like this. They say, well, there's the uh, ceremonial law, and there's the, uh, the dietary law, and there's the moral law. You know, so did Jesus fulfill all of this? Or did he just fulfill part of it? Or did he just sacrifice himself and we're supposed to still follow it? One thing I want to say right off the bat is if you're a, a Gentile, you're a non-Jew, the Old Covenant didn't directly relate to you. Although uh, uh, there is uh, some precedent in the, even in the Old Testament that there was non-Jews that were incorporated into Israel. I'm not going to talk about those few people. Uh, primarily, God gave the law to Israel and uh, the the temple sacrifices, the priesthood, the uh, dietary laws, all of that stuff, even the Ten Commandments was given to Moses to give to the children of Israel. So for the most part, non-Jewish people were not included in the Old Covenant. Now, you can argue about that if you want, but you know, in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, the Apostle Paul even said that we were without God and without hope in the world. We were not part of the covenants of Israel, but in Christ we have been brought in and uh, now uh, Jew and Gentile both can be brought into one body in Christ and that I mean that's the ultimate good news but the question today is is there any part of the old covenant law that we are still to keep uh, can we eat pork um, do we uh, have to not work on the Sabbath which by the way is actually our Saturday uh, Christians gather on Sunday and like to call that the Sabbath, but did that really change? Is that important? Uh, what about tithing? Is the Old Testament uh, law of tithing uh, related to a New Testament, New Covenant believer? These are all questions that uh, sometimes you have, to, you, you have to wrestle with and you really have to kind of come to some kind of conclusion if you want to be a biblical Christian. Um, so I'm going to attempt to touch on some of these things. Maybe it might take a few videos, but uh, for now, let me just say this. In Hebrews, uh, we have a clear handing over of the guard. In Hebrews 7, we see that the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, it tells us in Hebrews 7, could not perfect the worshiper. Couldn't. The law that was attached to the Levites and the Levites themselves absolutely could not perfect the worshiper because the sacrifices had to keep being given. The priest would live and die and another one would come and they would live and die and, it, and they never could accomplish the perfection of the worshiper. So God instituted a new thing. In, in Hebrews 7, it's defined as the uh, priesthood of Melchizedek. And he's making the case there that Jesus is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek because he had no beginning and no end. He had no mother and father. He has no genealogy. Jesus, of course, had a genealogy in an earthly sense, but he's the son of God. So uh, so in Hebrews 7, it tells us that if there's a change of law or a change of priesthood, then there has to be a change of law. So we are uh, came out from the Levitical priesthood and now we are in the Melchizedek priesthood. So then in chapter 8 of Hebrews, he says, well, you know, if no fault would have been found with the old covenant, then he would have just left it alone. But the fault was found with the worshiper. The, per the people could not keep God's covenant. So he said he was going to do a new thing. He was going to do a new covenant. And then he was going to do it. He was going to write his laws in our hearts and our minds, and then we would all know the Lord. We wouldn't need to tell anybody, know the Lord, because we would all know. That's, that's the new covenant. And then in chapter 9 of Hebrews, he says, you know, that Jesus is greater than the animal sacrifices. He's greater than the temple. He's greater than the old covenant priesthood. We got a brand new thing in Christ. And somewhere along the line, we have to make the decision to make a clean break from the old and totally 
submerse ourselves in the new. There's no mixing of the two, which is exactly what the letter Paul wrote to the Galatians was all about. He had preached the gospel to the people in Galatia. They had gotten born again, living by the Spirit. Some Jews come in there trying to tell them they needed to become Jewish and got them all mixed up. So Paul told them, if you allow yourself to be circumcised, you have to go and keep the whole law of Moses and you basically turned your back on Christ. So don't do that. Don't go, don't go under a, an old system when you have the brand new one and it's perfect. And in Hebrews 10, 14, it actually says that he has by one offering, by one sacrifice, perfected for all time those that are being made holy or those that are sanctified. So the goal of perfecting us through Jesus Christ is accomplished when we receive him and what he has done and who he is. That's amazing. So make a clean break today. Stop getting caught up in old covenant stuff and embrace Christ and believe that he really did fulfill the law. I'll get into more detail about this maybe in the next few videos. So uh, I hope you can catch them. Uh, thanks for listening.